We've looked at how to calculate center, how to calculate spread using two different methods. Again, depending on whether we're dealing with a symmetric or approximately symmetric distribution or something that's highly skewed. Now we want to talk about outliers, identifying outliers for so those two different types of distributions. The methods are quite a bit different, so we want to separate these two and talk about them individually. Before we talk about identifying outliers for symmetric dis distributions, the first thing we need to introduce is the empirical rule. So for a unimodal symmetric distribution that looks something like this curve, which if you have seen something like this before, you probably know what we're talking about is the normal distribution, um, sometimes called the bell curve. But we have a, nor a unimodal symmetric distribution. Whenever we have a distribution like that, then our mean is going to be exactly the center of this data set. If we look one standard deviation away from the mean in both directions, then we're going to see about 68% of all of our data values falling in that range. So approximately 68% of all data values are within one standard deviation of the mean. So again, that idea that every individual data value deviates from the mean by some amount, once we calculate the standard deviation, then we can count distance away from the mean in terms of standard deviation. So here, the difference from our mean to this point would be one standard deviation. Difference from our mean to here would also be one standard deviation, just one standard deviation below. If we look at data values that are within two standard deviations, of the mean of our data, then we should see 95% of all of our data values represented there. So approximately 95% of all data is within two standard deviations of the mean. And if we expanded this out to three standard deviations, we should see 99% of all data. So approximately 99% of all observations should fall within three standard deviations of the mean. So we consider any outcome with less than a 5% chance of occurring to be unlikely. That's a fairly arbitrary cutoff, 5%. And in later topics, we'll actually look at making adjustments, choosing different values for what we consider to be usual or unusual. But the kind of standard number is 5%. If any outcome has less than a 5% chance of occurring, we consider that to be unlikely. So if we pair this idea with the empirical rule, that's going to give us a method for identifying outliers using the mean and standard deviation. If a data value is more than two standard deviations away from the mean, that means it's outside this 95% range, where we see 90, that two standard deviation range where we see 95% of our data. So the chance of it occurring is less than 5%. So we consider that to be unlikely to occur or consider that to be an outlier. So what we need to do is come up with a way to take a value and measure how far in standard deviations away it is away from the mean. So we can measure that, that distance from the mean to any given data value. By converting that data value into a z-score. So there's a very simple formula for doing that once we know the mean, the standard deviation, and our data value. What we do is we take whatever the mean is, we subtract our data value, uh, 
I'm sorry, let me flip that around. We take whatever our data value is that we're considering, we subtract the mean, and then we divide by the standard deviation. So it's a relatively simple formula, but what we're going to look at is a tool that's available uh, and embedded in the MLP course that you can link to that will take care of those calculations for you, even though they're relatively simple, just to make that process a little easier in case you don't have a calculator on hand. So in the next two examples, we want to look back at the examples we've already completed, and specifically in example six, convert two different data values into z-scores and interpret those results. So we'll take a look at the number 41, so when the bears scored 41 points per game, and we'll also take a look at the value 51 when they scored 51 points per game. So we already have our mean calculated, our standard deviation calculated, so all we need to do is take our value of 41, subtract the mean, and then divide that by the standard deviation. Or alternatively, if we switch back to the MLP shell, on the module 3.2 page, there are linked to two different calculators here. The first one is a z-score calculator. So if we click that, that'll open a new window. What we can do here is input the data value, input the mean, input the standard deviation, and it's just going to complete that calculation for us. So for this example, we are considering a data value of 41. So when they scored 41 points per game, we know their mean number of points per game is 23.44, and the standard deviation was 13.27. So we input those three values, and we calculate our results. So our x value, our data value is 41, mean and standard deviation, just a good thing to verify that, make sure everything ended up in the right place, gives us a z-score of 1.323. So in this case, we get a z-score of 1.323. meaning 41 points per game is a typical value or a value that we would expect to occur. Because again, we're using this idea that if a value is more than two standard deviations away from the mean, it's unusual. A z-score of 1.323 means this data value is just a little over one standard deviation away from the mean. So it's within that 95% range. We consider it to be a typical value to occur. So now let's look at doing the same thing, but with a data value of 51. If we come back to the calculator, we have the same mean, the same standard deviation. We just need to change the data value that we're considering. We click Submit. And in this case, we get a z-score of a little over 2, 2.077. So we get a z-score of 2.077, which is larger than 2, meaning this data value, or this number of points per game, is unusually high or unlikely to occur. So what we have is an outlier. Any data value that's more than two standard deviations away, so it has a z-score of more than 2.077, is going to be unlikely to occur, unusual. So we can take a given data value, we can calculate its z-score, we can find out how far it is from the mean, classify that individual point as either an outlier or a usual normal value. The other thing we can do is take our data and calculate the maximum and minimum usual values. So kind of in one step, calculate the max and min range for what we would expect to see, and then we can automatically classify anything outside that range as an outlier or an unexpected value. So back on that 3.2 tab, there's the maximum minimum usual value calculator. This is going to be set up to work two ways and it's giving us the formulas that it's going to calculate up above. The first one we're going to look at is when this is using the mean and standard deviation. What this is going to do, and there's some symbolic notation we haven't talked about here yet, but this is essentially going to take 
the mean of our data minus two times the standard deviation. That's going to give us our lower bound because that would be the number that's two standard deviations below. It'll take our mean plus two times the standard deviation. So the number that's two standard deviations above and tell us what those maximum and minimum values should be. So since we're entering the mean and standard, devi standard deviation, I'll enter the mean in this first box, which again was 23.44, and the standard deviation in the second box, 13.27. This is again just showing us the formula that it's calculating. It's taking our first value minus twice the second value, first value plus twice the second value, to get this range of numbers. So our usual values in this case or our typical values would be from negative 3.1 or if we wanted to we could adjust that and say it's 0 because there aren't going to be negative points from 0 to 49.98 points per game. Anything beyond that range is unusual or unlikely to occur, meaning it's an outlier. So two different methods for identifying outliers. We can take the individual data values and calculate z-scores, which is what we did here and here. Or we can generate this range of values where we get the minimum and maximum usual values. Realize that anything within that range is within two standard deviations of the mean. Anything beyond that is more than two standard deviations from the mean, which automatically classifies it as an outlier.